This is episode 11. And another way that God speaks in scripture, and it's very uh, popular and prevalent today, uh, is encounters with angels. Now, I uh, learned something from a well-known British theologian that just stuck in my heart. I think it was Andrew that asked him about uh, angels receiving messages from angels because there's also a lot of warning in scripture about Satan appearing as an angel of light. We see in Galatians, Paul saying, um, if even an angel appears to you with a different gospel, then may be accursed. You know, that is not, that is not an angel from the Lord. Also, we see in scripture, um, for those of you that's new in the Lord, um, that, that, um, demons actually fall in angels. So God still uses angels today. Uh, Hebrews 1 says they are in service of those who believe. They, they're messengers in service of those who believe. So we definitely don't want to um, close our, our, our minds or our, that the fact that God can use angels. He definitely can use angels to this day. He still does. He sends in angels as messengers. Um, angels sometimes appear in dreams, um, and uh, uh, and we as believers are open to that. That said, uh, this this theologian um, said something that made a lot of sense to me. He said that angels do not bring attention to themselves, so they uh, definitely don't want to be worshipped. We we'll, we see that often in scripture. We Someone so overwhelmed by the presence of God as the angel of the Lord appears to them and they're so um, maybe shiny <laughs> that they fall to their knees also in fear. And we, the angels say, don't, don't worship me, worship God. Um, so one of the things, an angel that's of the Lord, sorry my dog, <laughs> an angel that's of the Lord will not accept worship, will not want your attention, um, would uh, just be a messenger from the Lord. And for that reason, if I look at scripture, it's really very dramatic points in history where angels appeared and brought a message. For example, Joseph and Mary. Um, Joseph really needed to get that message from the Lord. It was a very interesting situation he was in when the angel appeared to him and said, Mary's going to be uh, have a baby or, like conceived by the Holy Spirit. He'll be the Savior of the world. Um, you must call him Jesus. I mean, those are to Mary also. She needed that kind of blatant messenger from the Lord. It was a um, very important time in in history of um, the world, really. And uh, we we see that at different times, um, Gideon, an angel appearing to him. So it's throughout Scripture and um, and and in the New Testament too. Uh, so what is the caution? The caution is that. Yes, there's people that worship angels, and the Bible is clear that we should not. Um, uh, we do not pray to angels. We do not, um, yeah, go in lengthy conversations with them if they appear. We ex we we discern if it's from the Lord two ways. Um, it does not bring a message contrary to Scripture. It does not draw attention to itself, but it draws attention. To God, and I've had a few um, experiences with angels, and that this was years ago. And if I can share with you, for me, the highlight of it wasn't oh, I saw an angel, um, and sometimes it was so clear that I uh, almost thought I saw it with my physical eyes, but I think I saw it with my spiritual eyes. And sometimes it, um, in one incident, I actually was with a bunch of believers. We were busy praying and we saw the same thing, which is quite shocking because you, when you see spiritual things, you always still think, am I imagining this? And then when friends see it with you, um, it's got to be supernatural. So what stood out for me about these encounters was that I was more aware of an aspect of God's character than I was wowed by the angels. So I think it's really important that we realize that um, true that angels that's from the Lord will bring worship, will result in us worshiping and glorifying God. They'll speak um, truth of Scripture with, in line with Scripture. They won't bring another gospel. Um, and also that uh, it's very important, and I think that's where we can go into areas if we pursue that. Also, another time that God uses angels often, and we hear of it often in the Middle East, 
um, in in uh, both Muslim countries and also ex-Soviet Union countries, or when they're still part of the Soviet Union, that God would send angels to minister to people, to minister the gospel to people, to comfort believers. And I'm very passionate on this subject. I... <sighs> I really believe that in the body of Christ today, too much are made of angels and angels doesn't want to be made much of, that actually God wants us to be his hands and feet. And the times that he has to use angels, often it's a sad thing because his people aren't there, his church is not there, or his church is not doing their job. And um, I'm, I'm saying this um, as something that's very near to my heart, because I do believe that God wants to use you and me as messengers, as those who will encourage, as those who will carry the gospel. And um, yes, I think behind the scenes, his angels are very busy protecting us. Uh, they are our bodyguards often. And I think they often are the ones delivering dreams or um, delivering messages, but they do not want to draw attention to themselves. So I believe it's not something we should often um, encounter and uh, it's not a huge part of us hearing the Lord in that direct way and um, seeing them hearing their voices etc so if that makes sense to you if that settles something to, for you that you will not be negative or close to God using angels today as messengers but that you will also say Lord a uh, um, angel just means messengers say Lord Use me, make me a messenger um, for your gospel, a messenger for your truth, um, a messenger for, for the word of the Lord. And you, Lord, use my hands to do things um, like feeding um, the saints, comforting those who are tired and weak, um, because I'm called to be part of your body and you want, do you want to use your church, so use your church. And even the countries where we hear that he uses angels, pray that the Lord of the harvest will send workers into the harvest field because they will still need to be added to family. They'll still need to um, hear the Lord's voice. Uh, whether Jesus spoke to them himself, whether angels spoke to him, they will still need brothers and sisters like we all do. They will still need family to be added to. So pray for the church and persecuted and closed nations that they will hear the Lord and experience the Lord's love the way he tended to. And that's through his church. That is through his church and his leaders by his spirit with an open Bible. Yeah, so I don't think I can give you an exercise. <laughs> about um, hearing the Lord's voice like that would, I mean, hearing the Lord's voice through angels. I can't say do that. But I do want to pray for you that um, you will be open to the Lord speaking to you in any way that he spoke in the Bible and um, that you will open your heart to that. And yeah, Lord Jesus, for people that have a negative connotation with angels or maybe an unhealthy obsession, People that maybe um, have a negative thought about meditation or prophecy or dreams and visions, all these things we've mentioned, negative connotation with hearing you through leaders. God, won't you bring healing? Won't you bring restoration of biblical truth, Lord? And um, yeah, I pray that as I read your word for the next while, I want to encourage you to, to read Acts, the book of Acts. As they read, say the book of Acts, Lord, that um, they will see so many different ways that you directed your people, that you spoke to and through your people, that you brought revelation, and they will be open to all that you want to do, Lord, that in a new way they'll submit to you and say, Lord, whichever you, you way you want to speak, not just the ways I'm comfortable with, not just the ways I currently have faith for, but speak to me in any way you want, in Jesus' name. Amen.